In this chapter, we're going to go over a second additional lighting model, and this one's called the Cook-Torrance lighting model. This lighting model was initially developed to simulate metal, and the reason that it was developed was that uh, some of the early researchers noticed that some surfaces had really faceted uh, shapes on their surface, and these facets were smaller than a pixel. They're, they're called micro facets. And so they wanted to create a lighting formula that would account for these micro facets on the surface. So let's look at, at this diagram here. Here we have a completely smooth surface, but in this other image, we have a surface that's, that's made up of micro facets. Now if you look at the completely smooth surface, we can see that the light is reflected uniformly in all directions. But on this surface with micro facets, we can see that the light is, instead of being reflected uniformly, it's reflected randomly in lots of different directions. And so this is the phenomenon that we're trying to simulate with the Cook-Torrance lighting model. Uh, so let's jump over here and, uh, and go ahead and take a look at the code. So what I've done is I've created a function called Cook-Torrance specular lighting, and in this function, we pass in n.l, n.v, n.h, v.h, and we also pass in two roughness values, roughness 1 and roughness 2. And so here's our code. The Cook-Torrance lighting model uses three uh, main terms. The first term is g, and g is what we're using to approximate how much shadowing and masking is taking place. So let's look at this uh, illustration here. And what we can see here is that some of these facets actually shadow or mask out the light that's being reflected uh, from other facets. So we want to take into account that not all of the light that's being reflected back is actually going to make it outside the surface. Depending on how rough the surface is, there's going to be more shadowing or less shadowing. So jumping back into our code here, we can see that uh, this is what G is computing. And I'm not going to go into the, the nitty gritty of exactly what the code is doing. The next term is the Fresnel term. And of course, we've talked about Fresnel term before, but this is what the light is doing on the edges of the model. Um, so we know that objects have different properties or different reflectance properties on the edges than on surfaces that are pointing right at the viewer. And so that's what the, the Fresnel term is doing. And then finally, we have our roughness. And this is the part that actually computes the lighting uh, based on how rough our surface is. So one thing to take note of here is that this roughness 2 value that we're passing in is getting used for the Fresnel term. And roughness 1 that we're passing in is getting used uh, for the main surface roughness. So roughness 1 is the surface roughness, and roughness 2 is the Fresnel term roughness. And then once we've computed all of this, we add up the uh, shadowing and masking term, and the Fresnel term, and the roughness term, or excuse me, we multiply those together and then divide them by n.l times n.v. And that is going to give us our final uh, Cook-Torrance specular lighting. So let's take a look at how this is used in context. I'll scroll down here to my shader. The vertex shader is exactly the same, and the fragment program is very similar. I start out by sampling my textures, just as always, and I create my tangent to, or my world space to tangent uh, vectors. And then I put my normal for my normal map in world space, just like I've always done. Compute my light and view vectors and my ambient light. And up until here, the shader is exactly the same as all the ones that we've taken a look at so far. So I compute n.l, but at this point, I don't saturate it. I don't clamp it between 0 and 1 because I need it unclamped to pass into my Cook-Torrance function. So I compute n.l, and then I call diffuse light the, uh, the saturated version of it. Now for specular light, 
it's similar to blend, but there are a few more little variations here. So I'm computing my half angle by adding my light and view vectors together and normalizing. Then I'm computing n dot h, and then I, I compute, compute a couple of additional terms here as well, n dot v and v dot h, and n dot l, n dot h, n dot v, and v dot h are all the things that I need to pass into my Cook Torrance lighting function. So I'm creating all of my parameters here, and then I actually call my Cook Torrance lighting function, and I pass in n dot l, n dot v, n dot h, and v dot h. And of course, what all these parameters are doing is just measuring the angle between the normal and the light vector, the normal and the view vector, the normal and the half angle, and the view vector and the half angle. So my Cook Torrance lighting function needs all of these angle measurements uh, in order to compute its final lighting. And of course, I also pass in roughness 1 and roughness 2. And what I want to do really quick is just jump up here to the top and show you that I've added um, two UI elements for roughness 1 and roughness 2. And I've named roughness 1 specular roughness and I've named Roughness2 Fresnel Roughness. Now if I wanted to, instead of using these UI elements, um, so what this does is in Max it adds Specular Roughness as a slider, and it also adds Fresnel Roughness as a slider. Instead of adding these as uh, UI elements, I could actually input them as a texture. So I could store my Roughness1 in the R channel of the texture, and Roughness 2 in the G channel of the texture. And the advantage of that would be that I could actually paint um, the roughness on the surface. So if I knew I had some areas of the model that were going to be really nice and glossy, uh, I would paint white in those areas. And in other areas that I knew were going to be really rough, for example, if I had some metal uh, with, some rough, uh, with some rust on it, I could paint those areas really dark. So I could have variants of roughness across the surface of the model. And that would be kind of cool. But in this example, I've just decided to keep it simple um, by adding these as UI elements. So like I said, we'll scroll down here to the bottom again. And we're passing roughness 1 and roughness 2 into our Cook Torrance model. And then multiplying by our specular color and our specular texture. So now that we've got our Cook Torrance specular color calculated, uh, we actually put it all together here at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to take that specular value and I'm going to add it to my color texture times my diffuse color. And I'm going to multiply that by the light color and the diffuse light and add in the ambient color. And that's going to give you your final uh, model pixel color. So there you go, that's how Cook Torrance works. Now let's jump over here to Max, and I want to demonstrate the Cook Torrance lighting in action. So here's my teapot, and you'll notice right now I have my specular roughness turned all the way down. And since my surface is not rough, I'm getting a really tight, glossy specular highlight uh, for an object that's, that's completely smooth. And what I've done here, just so you can see what's going on, is I've animated my specular roughness um, between 0 and 100. So as I scroll the, uh, the timeline, you can see that my specular highlight is going to get larger and larger and spread out a lot as the surface gets rougher and rougher. So here we go. So my surface is getting rough. And at this point, it starts to act kind of like brushed metal. Uh, and you can see that it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, a really neat looking uh, metallic reflectance. And I can turn it up all the way. And once I get to a surface that's really rough, it starts looking more like fired pottery or something, some, something with a surface that's extremely bumpy, um, that's not very specularly reflective at all. So that's how that works. I can turn it down to zero roughness, and it looks really glossy, or all the way up to the, the maximum amount of roughness, and it looks, I guess, really rough. And so, like I said, this model is made for 
um, uh, lots of different kinds of metal. So, you know, if you had it like this, that's a that's kind of a smooth metal, and then you know, turning it up, that's kind of a a brushed metal. So that's the Cook Torrance lighting model. A uh, really good way of simulating metallic surfaces, brushed metal, aluminum, and things like that. So in the next chapter, we're going to talk about the Oranayer lighting model, which is a variation. So we've talked about uh, Fong and Cook Torrens, which are variations on the specular lighting formula. And in the next chapter, we're going to talk about Oranayer, which is a variation on the diffuse lighting formula. So I hope you enjoy it.